I'm making everything new. Hallelujah. I, I'm making everything new. That's what we see in Revelation. So we just go to the book of Revelation and uh, read it. Uh, we read it from, um, um, from the, 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 this place is giving us, is has given us a verse uh, 21, 5. But we'll read it from verses 1 to 5 so that we will have the full, uh, uh, the details of what is talking about. Glory to God. Amen. We thank God. God is, God is uh, faithful. Uh, his word is coming to us every day to build the church up because of the things, events that will be unfolding upon the world. God is preparing his bride. We are his bride. God is preparing us so that we know the things that are coming, how it's going to be at the end of the day, so that we do not lose courage, so that we continue to hope on him because it's going to be beautiful. I read Revelation 21 from verses 1 to 5 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and a new earth. And uh, or uh, for the for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. It is well, brethren. Satan is a liar. A lot of discussion here, but I'm just seeing what I can do. Pastor, will take it. Pastor, are you around? Hello, is Pastor there? Yeah, no problem, man. Okay. 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 okay, and, and <laughs> verse 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, a door for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for this saying are true and faithful. Glory to God. This is the word. Is it not beautiful, brethren? He said, I make all things new. That means whatever the situation, whatever the challenge, whatever we are passing through now, whatever the pain, God said, He said, I make all things new. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The Bible, we are promised of a new heaven. And Revelation chapter 12, there is something I want to, I want to just show up briefly in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 1. Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just read something from Revelation chapter 12 to see when they say new heaven. Which heaven is God talking about the place? This place is telling us of a new heaven, what is the present heaven now? We are promised a new heaven and a new earth. <clears throat> you know, brother, the reign of man must come to an end. The reign of man must come to an end. So God will take over. The heaven, the throne of God will take over. God will, the, the, key, the Bible, we are told in, in uh, uh, Daniel chapter two, you know, when Nebuchadnezzar had so dream a dream that he could not he could not interpret the dream even left his head, but it was trouble. We're told that Daniel came and interpreted that dream and told him of a stone because Nebuchadnezzar actually built, we know he built a, a, an image that the whole people upon the earth, because he was the ruler over the earth, then they were worshiping that image, you know. But Daniel told him, he said that image was broken, a stone called with her hand broke that image. And that stone became, you know, occupy the whole earth. See, the whole earth and all nations flow to it. 
A new heaven is in the making, brethren. A new heaven. Satan is cast down. Let me read Revelation. Let me quickly read Revelation 12 and see what is saying there. So when we talk about a new heaven, what is he saying? What is a new heaven saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, he said in verse 9 says, and a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which, which accused them before our God day and night. You see, cast down. The center is cast down from heaven. The heaven where matters are determined, things are determined. The Bible says, we are told here, Satan is cast down. It says, rejoice, rejoice. So there is rejoicing, now comes salvation and strength unto the people of God because Satan is cast down. That is what we are told, brethren. We must take that position. We must take, we must believe the word of God and, and, and take that position of strength that Satan is cast down. All his cohort, they are cast down. The sons of God that God has been preparing, they are taking over the heavens. The Bible says, a new heaven will I create. The end of Satan must come to an end. The end of man, the reign of man must come to an end. All the things that they are preparing now, their munitions, uh, artillery, like whatever they call it, nuclear weapons, and all. They are going to use it against the same. Nation will use it against the same. Second Peter 3 tells us, the, the kingdom of God must take over. A new heaven will God create, where dwelling righteousness. And he says something, he says, there shall be no more pain. There shall be no more sin. What does C signify? C talks of unrest, unrest, worries, tension in nations, as we see it in Nigeria, right? That is C, speaks of unrest. The Bible says, there shall be no more sin. There shall be no more pain. There shall be no more cry. There, be, there shall be no more tears. All old things are taken away. Nations shall no longer rise against nation. Kingdom shall no longer rise against kingdom. There will be no more famine. There will be no more death. Glory to God. This is what God has promised us, brethren. And it is tough here, the Lord. So I just want to give us a kind of background of what today's topic is all about. That God is determined to take course to our spiritual destination as long as we focus on him. As long as we know that we are stranger, if this place is not the place that we are going to, this present situation of things, all the events that are happening, all this, it shall, it shall not continue like that forever, brethren. We have hope, hope of eternal life, hope to be with God, hope to be with Christ, a new heaven, a new earth, where there will be no more sorrow. Everything that we, come, we see now, they shall come down. Everything that man has made shall come down. The system of man, the culture, everything, the system that man has set up must come down. It doesn't matter the country involved. It doesn't matter the nation involved. It does not matter. God must take over the kingdom. God must take over the world. The Bible says for the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. We are his Christ. Christ, the principal son. Many Christ, you and I. But we must overcome. The Bible says, he that overcome it. We must overcome the beastly character, attitude, disposition, lifestyle that are not in harmony with the word of God. We must overcome it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's go to the topic of today. And read. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the great thing that you have for us. So we read, it is said that the, the, the Titanic uh, sank because of cheap rivets and poor planning. 
We know about that, Tiffany. I mean, everybody knows about it. We have heard about it, how big it was, how the, the, the you know, it was a manufacturer, how we, we even learned, we even got to know that when they asked the people that, that built that ship, how, how solid and good it was. And they said, not even God can fit it. We heard about that, you know, so they were so sure of it. There's something happened. So let's see what happened. So the, the face, face with a shortage of, okay, I, I, I will read it again. He said that the Titanic sank because of cheap rivets and poor planning. Face with a shortage of quality boats. That means it is that they were used, that were used for that ship, construction of that ship, were not, were of substandard. The ship builder used substandard ones that popped when the ship hit the iceberg. So, so the question now is, how sturdy are the boats of your faith? How strong are the boats of your faith? What do you build your faith on? Are you just living as one that, you know, everything ends the, right on this earth, you just enjoy yourself, you do all kinds of things. You are a believer, maybe you have not even known Christ, I must enjoy myself, this life, not only one that they live and move, but it is not true. That is deception. So how strong is your faith? How, what are you building your faith on? What kind of material are you building with? Because the Bible says, everything shall be shaped. God said, I will shake the heaven, Hagar, in the book of Hagar. I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. The things that are not shakable will only be the things that will remain. What do you build your faith on? Are you, are you building it on Christ? Do you love Christ? Are you leaning on him? Are you consecrating yourself? Are you living a life of denial? Are you crucified to the world? Remember what Paul says in Galatians 2.20. Then he said, I'm crucified, I'm dying to the world. The world is dying to, dead to me. He said, the life that I live, I live by the grace of the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. And the Bible said that if Christ died for us, it, we also died in him. Remember when Christ went to the cross, he died, we died with him. We rose, we resurrected with him, through, but identified with him through baptism. We were lowered into the mansion, to the water, and raised up. We die to see we are alive unto God. So we must reckon ourselves to be dead to see and alive unto God. That is a lifestyle that God wants us to take in. Praise God. Say, reinforce the daily. The life you are living, reinforce it. You are living it unto God. You are in, we are encouraged to reinforce it. How do we reinforce it? With God's word. Study, the, study God's word. Season of in depth prayers. We, we are to give access to prayers. The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That presupposes that there are things that we want to make us to faint, things that will bring discouragement, things that will bring weariness, things that will make us to sleep and slumber, things that will make us become dull to the spiritual things. These tendencies are there. All these things are there. All fulfilled dreams, expectations all being met. There is a tendency to slow down. There is a tendency to be weary. There is a tendency to sleep. Because when you are not up there, when you are no longer active in the things of God, when you become passive, then you will sleep. You become weak. You can't pray. The things of God will not make any meaning to you anymore. Your love for God will be dying down. That is why the writer say, how is your boats? How are you, what are you building with? Glory to God. The Lord will help us, brethren, in the name of Jesus. We know darkness, the Bible says darkness will take over the earth. Gross darkness, but he shall be our glory. And they lift her up of our heads. Glory to God. Describing strength of the end time. Jesus said, all these things are the beginning of birth pain. 
is taking, if you read Matthew 24, you will see all the things that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, analyzed there, yeah? all the events that will be taking place upon the earth. And death, pain, signal, the onset of a final push. We know. We women, we know what it is when we talk about birth pain. Hallelujah. The obstetrician says, this will hurt for a while, but it's going to get better, yes. When a woman in labor, we know the pain it has, either it's progressive or it's not progressive. If it's not progressive, that's when the doctor will say, okay, we have to go for operation, you know. If, if the labor is not progressive, just is starting. But we know as, it, as the pain increases, is is that oh the, the child is coming out the child is going to come out so when the child comes out it's a new thing altogether we know who women will know more than the men you know hallelujah so right now the, the writer is saying that the events that are taking place upon the earth right now they are like bed pain when a woman is about to give birth to a new baby we know the joy that goes with it so it is now all the events it will increase brethren the events that are taking place in the world, we, is, we have not, is, the Bible says it's the beginning of so we haven't seen anything. We have not even entered uh, 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 one quarter of the events that will, take, that will be taking place upon the world. But we are to be encouraged by this word that is coming to us today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are in the final hour, just a few pushes away from delivery. John said, I saw a new heaven and earth. The first heaven and earth has passed away. And the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully designed for her husband. And I heard a loud word from the truth saying, God's dwelling, dwelling place is now among the people. That is, that is very instructive. I don't want to dive into that too much, you know, uh, I don't want to dive into that. I try to control myself and bring myself within the context of what we are saying. The Bible says that the tabernacle of God is with me. We read it in Revelation just now. The tabernacle of God has come to dwell in man. God delights to dwell in man. Christ is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He dwells in you by his spirit, by his word. We carry Christ. Anyway, we go down to why. We should be careful with what we do and the things that we allow into our hearts. Because Christ is, is in us. He lives. The tabernacle of God is with men. God has chosen to dwell in man. He's dwelling in you by his spirit. Christ is in you. Hallelujah. We resurrected with Christ. We died with him. We resurrect with him. Christ, that's the first resurrection. We are, he's living in us. He dwells in us. So we should know that that should, you know, uh, you know, guide us and direct the way, what we do, what we give ourselves to. Christ living inside of you. Hallelujah. So we have the DNA of Christ. We are his carrier. Hallelujah. That is why we are priests. We are, we, we, we are priests and priests. We are not just ordinary people. We must have that consciousness of who we are and what God has made us to be in him. Hallelujah. God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be their God. He will wipe tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no money, no cry, no pain. For the old things, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne says, I make everything new. Revelation 1, 1 to 5, we have read it. People everywhere are searching for answer. There, this is another uh, 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 exaltation here. Exaltation, we are encouraged as carrier of God, as priests unto God, a peculiar people unto God, there is an assignment that we have to carry out upon the air as Christ's ambassador. We are the solution to mess problems and challenges. Ultimately, that's how it is, brethren. Yes. He said, don't, it, we are the people that, we have the answer. People everywhere are searching for answers. 
Why? <laughs> because darkness is, is, is increasing upon the earth. Pain. People are haughty. Uh, they are looking for solution. Why must you not shy away from people? He said, don't isolate, engage. How do you engage? Preach the word of God. Give encouragement to people. Be a comforter to people. Yes. Preach. Minister. Somebody come to you with a problem or that needs cancer. That is not the time to be analyzing the problem and uh, they say, how, how did it even happen? Uh, they, no, that's, that's, that's not the time. It is the time for you to encourage, to use the word of God to encourage that person that you, 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 you are bringing healing upon such an individual. You engage, preach, minister, strengthen, give, encourage. Hallelujah, glory to God. Your goal is it to get out of this world in one place. It is to take as many people as you can to heaven we along with you. So the purpose of our we are saved we, God has saved us to also minister to others. Through us, God can save others. Through our ministry, through our teaching, you know, a people will be encouraged. A people will be strengthened. A people will hear the word of God. The word of God is good news. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's good news. We are the, we are the people that the, the world is waiting for. God is making songs. God is preparing the people that he will use in this last day. God is preparing, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you fellowship, but how are you building? What are you building with? What material are you building your life with? That's the question, the first question we, ask, we are asked here. How are you building? We, 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 we are given an example of the Titanic ship that was, we, we know what happened, how that is done. And we are told that the, the use of standard material Boats and rivers to build that that was why it could not stand the storm and the sun. So, what are we building with? Because every work shall be tested, shall pass through the fire. The Bible says the Paul was saying, say, Look, there is no any other foundation that a man can lay. Christ is the foundation. Okay, the life of Christ, what, what we know that foundation, what are we going to build, build with or on it? What are we building with? Is it sand? Is it wood? Is it hay? Is it malice? Is it bitterness? Is it grudges? Is it, uh, you know, you do me and do you, all those kind of stuff? Uh, is that what we are building with? Because it could pass through the fire. That new heaven and a new earth that God has promised us, <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you having a dream of it? Do you want to be part of it? Then you must deny this world. Everything the Bible says, friendship with the world. First Corinthians, uh, I know, first John, I think chapter 2, verse 15 says, Friendship with this world is an enmity with God because the loss of the eye, the loss of the flesh, the, the pride of life, they shall perish with the world because why? Everything, the glory of this world is already fading away. Man is already becoming tired. It's like they cannot find solution to it. One, one is going, another one is coming. Another, I even learned something has happened in a child, in one of these African countries, in Ghana, so there's a kind of virus that has come up, you know, will cause that virus, will cause it to its foundation. But what I will say, brethren, a lot of things I will be happy, are happy will get happy. But remember the ark that Noah built, the, that water, that flood that destroyed that generation is the same flood that lifted Noah up. Glory to God. Is the same that water that lifted him up, lifted him up. But to the up, to those people of believers that he preached, 120 years, they refused. They were laughing until they refused to repent from their evil way. It is that same flood that lifted Noah to a place of safety that destroyed them. Hmm. So that is it, brethren. So now God is telling us, the word of God is coming to us. Encouragement is coming to us. The Lord himself is coming to us, strengthening us. The light of God is shining. It's shining. We're having understanding of what is going on. Second Thessalonians chapter five, read it. 
We are not children of the night. The day that drink, they drink at night. They, they are drunk at night. But we are not children of the night. What is, when, they say, when the Bible says drunk, do not be drunk. What, what is the Bible saying? By the teeth of this world. Don't be carried away. Don't be drunk by the teeth of this world. That passes away with the loss of the eye, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. The way, you know, people, <coughs> you know, justify themselves. You do me, I do you. And eye for an eye, two for two. You know, but the Bible says overcome evil with good. Sometimes it, it gives me pain. I, I, I bring my pride down. I break it. I tell myself, no, no, this is what the word of God says do it. You know, a new heaven and a new earth. No dead shall be found there. Nothing or defy shall be found there. No liar shall be found there. You see, that is it. That's a new heaven. Glory to God. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Pastor. Contribution. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Sister Bridget. Uh, what a wonderful uh, way that you have um, explained this topic today. Uh, but it's a very, very important topic. <laughs> you know, the, the, the book of Revelation has always been a book that people shy away from because some people think that it's a scary, <laughs> scary book. Mm. And yes, um, yes, but if you're if you're a child of God, Book of Revelation actually is an encourage encouraging book Amen. Uh, that helps us to draw closer to God. And uh, I'm so thankful that we are treating this topic today because the time that we are at this time that we are right now that we all can we are witnessing. There is not time to, <laughs> to slow down our love for God. It's not time for us to stay away from the presence of God. It's not time for us to take God for granted. It's a time for us to wake up. Because if we look at the signs around us, if we look at the situation around us, this is the time when we want to solidify our faith. We want to build that strong foundation which we have. We want to build upon it. That strong foundation that Jesus Christ has built. We want to continue to build on it and stronger faith to look forward to that time. That because you know it is written, the the earth and the heaven and everything in it will pass away. The only thing that we stand is the word of God. And that word has come to the earth uh, in form of the flesh and went back to the Father and sent us the Holy Spirit that will be indwelling in our lives. So he can guide us to direct us in doing what God expects us to do, to be able to be in line with him. So that Amen. when that time Amen. comes, Amen. that everything Amen. is wiped out. Amen. Um, my sister just used the illustration that the same water that drowned everybody lifted Noah and his family up. Uh, listen, the war is going to go away. That word of God is what's going to lift us up when Jesus Christ comes. Because we will be, we are expecting him. When we people are taken shy away or being afraid of reading the book of Revelation, that means they have not come to the knowledge of Christ. Or they are not looking forward to the new heaven. And the Bible did make it clear to us Amen. that the people Amen. that we get caught up with him are Amen. those that are expecting him. Amen. Many Christians today, they think this world is the only world where they're going to live. Many Christians today, they only want the miracle. They don't want to, they don't want to go beyond what God is doing right now. But what God is doing right now is for what he's going to do later, the shadow of what he wants to do later. So if we limit our efforts to what is going on right now and thinking that our Christianity ends up in this moment, we are deceiving ourselves. Because our whatever is going on right now is a shadow of what's to come. And God is using this moment to remind us that the, 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 the war that's going on around, the fight that's going on, the hatred that's going on, the children that are actually killing the father, the father that are killing the children, it is a sign of his return. It's a beginning of, his, of, of knowing who he is. And that's where he wants us to get closer to him. That's when he expects us to cry to him. 
Because, you know, if we want to be honest with ourselves, there is nothing pleasurable about this world. Let's, let's, be, let's, be, let's look at it, frankly. Uh, what is pleasurable about this world? But things that fulfill the flesh, the loss of eye, the, the, the loss, the, the, the pride of life, and the, 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 the loss of flesh. Those are the only things. But those things are temporary. The only thing that keeps us looking and looking forward to is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he went and built a mansion for us that where he is now, we will be there with him. So, brethren, we're not trying to create a scary moment this morning. We're just trying to remind ourselves that, listen, check your boat. Are you using a quality boat to build your relationship with God? Or you're still using that or winging it? Oh, I'll do it when I can. Oh, it's not time yet. Or I will do it again. Or we, or are we dedicated in our relationship? Are we, are we actually looking forward to its return? Or we are being consumed by the things that are going on right now that we want to rush, rush, rush to buy this, to buy that, to gain that. What will it profit a man against the whole world and lose his soul? What will it profit that man? Nothing. Nothing. The man will only end up been destroyed. May God help us to look forward to his coming because when he shows up, uh, the Bible says, Yeah, we will be like him and it will change everything about us. And God will help us to see him and be prepared for his coming in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much, man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Pastor just said something. We, we are not, uh, whatever we are saying is not to scare anybody. Is just to let us know to draw our attention to the reality, to, to the truth. You know, um, you know, God is no respecter of anybody. God cannot lower His standard because of you and I, because we are not able to measure up. No, you know, Christianity is sweet. You know, why, 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 sometimes I say, why would people not love this God? Why would people not love Christ? When, when you measure the name of Christ, people, they don't want to hear it. Why? He stands for righteous, righteous, anything that is righteous. He stands for anything, everything that is right, everything that is good, everything that has good report, everything that will make man to be happy. That's what he stands for. No wickedness is in him. No, no iniquity is in him. Why we we not love such God? So, you know, the line is drawn. You know, is is either we choose and live, or we choose the other way around. But God will help us to choose Him and live right, because this world is fading away. Yes. Let's not deceive ourselves. There is fading away. Yes. <laughs> it's fading away. Glory to yes. God. Look at, look at Revelation 13. Let me, let me read a place in Revelation 13. What it says? He said, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and grace authority. What does, what does that suggest? If, if, if you read it, if you read this Revelation 13 and read 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, you will see what he's talking about. You see, the, the thing that is coming upon the world will be so terrible. How can, you see, what, what, what this place is telling us is, about, anyway, let, let me give room to those who other people that wants to, want to share. Please, we want more contribution. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Bridges. Honestly, as you were speaking, I don't even want you to stop. I just want you to keep on talking about this new Jerusalem. How beautiful, how beautiful that moment and that time will be. Where you tell us that there will not be any, you know, no cry, no more, no pain, no Amen. death. You know, Amen. imagine such thing. How beautiful could such things be? How beautiful, whereby God is going to crush or crush the head of the serpent. Amen. You know, 
that's when he will crush the head of the serpent, which means mm. he will he will put you know devil into captivity forever. Amen. That will continue to live in that light hey. which he has called us. In the name of you Jesus. You know, we will continue to be, you know, with him forever. How wonderful could that section, that period be? How wonderful. Hey, well, who are those people that will actually meet with him? Who are those people who, that will we sit with it. him? You I know, those are the people that they actually endure. Mm. And that is the reason why the Bible was telling us that blessed are those who endure trials. Mm. For that, Amen. for if they are, you know, that they will be approved at the judgment, they will be approved. You know, yeah. it is and really very important that, that we understand. You know, that if we can endure, and what are we enduring? This process that is going on right now, temptation Amen. that is mm. flying all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. just like a parable that was actually says that you can you cannot control a bird to fly over your head. But there is one thing you can control. Mm. You can stop that bird for, for making nest over your head. Mm. Mm. So which means we shouldn't give ourselves to the temptation of this world. We shouldn't mm. give ourselves to the darkness of this world, but we should keep on enduring because it's not easy. Because the crown of life is actually a wedding for each one of us. But it is unto those one that actually endure. Amen. You know, that they did not say that, oh, because this pain is too much. Let me de deviate. It is actually meant for those people. Amen. It is not easy. We can see even Noah that was actually used. He endured. Because how can one person and his family alone keep on building that hack? Imagine how big, gigantic that ark is. But one thing that, you know, Noah did, just from what we read today, he sustained himself with the word of God. He, he make his prayer. He was fervent in his prayer. And he was using that word to keep, to keep him going day by day by not getting distracted with the, you know, emulation that people, you know, all those kind of rubbish that people were saying to him, he did not get distracted. And the world is throwing so much garbage to us today. But we shouldn't get distracted. Because yeah. just like oh, we are saying, mm -hmm. we are the light of the world. We shouldn't continue to live with the darkness. We shouldn't yeah. even have a relationship with them. You know, we shouldn't let this word make us to be drunk. And, and, and we shouldn't let that spirit of dr drunkenness fall upon us that will make our eyes to be blind and our ears to be blocked from what the spirit is speaking to us. Because if we say that we walk in, we, we, we have the spirit living in us, then we need to walk in spirit, walk by the spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to be guiding us, to Keep on letting us see that light, that new Jerusalem that is before us, that we will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's just my contribution Amen. this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we walk, if we live by the spirit, we should walk in the spirit. If we are born again, we have received Jesus as our Lord, our personal Savior. The Bible says that to be carnally minded is dead, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if we are born again, we have tasted the goodness of God, the mercies of God, we should walk in the spirit. There are law that govern the spirit and we are encouraged to walk according to that law. That's what will bring peace to us. That's what will bring satisfaction and joy. Even in the face of contradiction, you are able to stand. You will be able to stand because the word of God dwells in you. You are living in the spirit. You are not bringing yourself to the down, to, to, uh, to the level of the earth. You, uh, you know, Colossians 3 has also, you know, uh, you know uh, an, another uh, scripture that backs what uh, Pastor Mr. said, living and walking in the spirit. He said, if you be risen with Christ, seek the things that are above. If you are born 
again, you are, you are, you know, you are live, you have to live that life, that life that is in conformity with the world, with the life that you are now living, with what you have received. Glory to God. More contribution. What contribution, brethren? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. If if no more contribution, we pray, then I hand over to Pastor. Let's pray. Let's whatever God has ministered to your heart through today's word. Yeah. Let's use it to pray that the Lord will help us to stand. We shall not be carried away. We shall not be discouraged. We shall, we shall not be disoriented. We shall not be distracted by the things that are happening. We shall not also live in fear. We shall not live in fear. Let's pray that the Lord will help us. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We thank you for your word that you have brought to us this morning. Father, we thank you because you are the ark of this last day. Our Lord, we thank you because the grace and the strength to live a life that is in harmony with your word has been given to us. There is no excuse for any of us to say we can't, we couldn't make it. No. Father, we receive your help, we receive your grace, we receive your strength that you have provided for us. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Lord, we thank you for the grace that you have made available. We take advantage of all the things that you are, you are making things easy, creating ease for us. You are making things easy for us. You are making things, oh God, available for us to be able to run the race that is set before us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in our life, what you are doing in the life of our brethren, what you are doing in our home, in our family, in our marriages, in the, in the life of our children. We are grateful to you. Lord, when our children, oh God, you said peace shall be the increase of our children. When our children have peace and they are doing well, we are able to run the race. When our marriages are doing well, we are able to run the race. When, oh God, Father, you deliver us from infirmity, diseases, oh God, as we have promised that you will not permit any of the diseases of the Egypt that will put upon us, we will be able to run the race. Father, make it easy for us, Lord. We lean on you, oh God. We come to you, Father. Help us to run this race that you said before us so that at the end of the day, we will not run in vain. At the end of the day, your grace will not be in vain in our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We worship and adore you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Is Pastor still around? Praise God. Is Pastor still around? Yeah. Okay. Is Pastor Mrs. available? Praise the Lord. Okay, I hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sister Bridget, for helping us through today. Thank you for, for everyone that has joined. But if you don't know Christ, um, you're still missing out. You won't be able to comprehend with what we has been discussed today. There is no way you can get that hack that actually can sustain you just like you know the 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 the, the ship that you know that 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 that, that drown is because the the strength which is supposed to carry them was not you know available to them but it is not too late for us to for you to actually accept Christ as your lord and your personal savior this morning all you just need to say that lord Come into my life, oh Lord, accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And from there, then you can receive that Holy Spirit that can actually help you to, you know, to maneuver this world that is darkened. And God will see you through and you will send light unto you by, you know, going on the internet, search for, you know, any church around that is spirit filled, that is true, that they are worshiping in true and in spirit. And they will help you through, they will guide you, they will lead you through your journey with Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. For the rest of us this morning, I just want us to appreciate God. 
Let's thank God because every resources that we'll be needing to continue to reign with Christ forever, to be in that new Jerusalem, God has granted unto us. And that is what we have here from your daughter that has embraced us with it, O Lord, this morning, that has enriched us with it this morning. All we need is, is your word. We don't need to go to the bank and borrow money for it. We don't need any equilateral to put down. We don't need anything, you know, we don't need any of any of our property, you know, to actually use as a, a collateral. All we just need at this hour is to, uh, you know, to, to accept Christ as our Lord and our personal Savior, and also accept his, as, uh, his word, believing in his word, uh, you know, knowing that the word of God is powerful, and that is why he said it's a two-edged sword. He pierced through the blood, uh, the marrow, everything to change us. Uh, as the odd we just have to accept this morning, walk in the word of God. We should continue to be walking in his word every day and continue fasting in the mighty name of Jesus and to pray, pray, keep on praying, asking Holy Spirit to continue to be guiding you in this dark moment uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we give you all the praise this morning. We thank you, Father Lord Almighty, for you are the sustainer of our soul, oh Lord. We give you honor. We give you all adoration, oh Lord, for you love us, oh Lord, with all love, oh Lord, Father Lord. Your love is on uh, is unconditional. Your love is so steady fast, oh Lord, to the point that uh, you send your only begotten son because you know there is no other way we can make it because you make us know that our righteousness is just like a fitira. What again can we actually use, oh Lord, to sustain ourselves, to be in that new Jerusalem? And that is the reason why you bring your son, oh Lord, because you know that blood of your son. It is only that way that we can make it through. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give a praise, O oh Lord. Father, in heaven, may continue to help us, O oh Lord, through the struggle of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us, O oh Lord, the endurance Amen. that we need uh, in the mighty name of Jesus to see Amen. it through in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord, we extend this, your word, O oh Lord, uh, to everyone that is not on the line today in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will Amen. quicken their mortal body in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus, that they will not fall uh, into the temptation of this world. Uh, they will Amen. not be carried away with the frustration Amen. of the world uh, in Amen. the mighty name of Jesus, but Amen. they will be with you forever in the yes. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father Lord, your word that we have here today, it will not stand against us, O oh Lord, on the day Amen. of judgment in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Continue Amen. to encourage us more. Continue yes. to move us forward in the mighty name of Jesus. And Amen. never take your Holy Spirit away from us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we give you all the praise. We surrender all the activities, O oh Lord, left uh, throughout the day into your hand. The weekend is into your hand. Father, Lord, may your name be glorified. May your name be glorified in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace. May the, the grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love, love of God, God, and the, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. 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 Surely, goodness Amen. and mercy Amen. shall follow Amen. us all the days Amen. of our life, Amen. and we shall Amen. dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 I'm the I'm one the, one the Lord, Lord has blessed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you Thank so you much, so ma'am. Thank you, everyone, for joining. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you. Amen. Amen.